People's Platform. Good evening and welcome to the People's Platform. When we talk about economic recovery and development, do we speak enough about the importance of investing in people by improving the well-being of every individual in society so that they can reach their fullest potential? Based on the premise that the success of society is linked to the well-being of every citizen. Tonight's topic will focus on the importance of factoring in social development. I'm so pleased to welcome to the studio for the first time um, researcher and feminist activist Niantini Khadirgama. Welcome to the show, Niantini. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Uh, Niantini, um, speak to us about how important it is to factor in social development when we talk about economic recovery and development and infrastructure how important is it for us to factor in this concept of social development vis-a-vis -vis the human development indicators mm. sure um, so Sonali, when we look at Sri Lanka's history post independence uh, we see that uh, there's been uh, a lot of importance given to social development, uh, particularly in terms of investing in social protection programs. Um, so we have free health, uh, free uh, education, um, as well as you know programs that were um, targeted at ensuring food security for people, um, including giving food subsidies. Um, and then there were programs uh, targeted towards the elderly, pension schemes, superannuation funds, uh, as well as um, you know particularly targeted programs towards the poor, like uh, Samurdi, for example. Right? What we see is that while in the early years there was a lot of um, public investment going into those programs, uh, in recent years we've seen um, investments declining uh, for social protection. Right, and and um, this has um, also resulted in a lot of uh, hardships for the people. Uh, but what we saw happen with the early investments in social development uh, is that the human development in, in indices, if you look at them, um, and if you compare with um, um, similar countries like Sri Lanka, Sri Lanka has been doing pretty well. Um, in terms of our literacy, in terms of our health indicators, in terms of gender equality and so on, right? Um, so the concern right now when we talk about economic recovery is that are we still focused on um, a, a holistic kind of economic recovery? Are we thinking about social development? Are we thinking about social protection for people? Um, and given that over time uh, these programs have been underfunded, uh, what we saw when the economic crisis happened uh, is that people were really struggling uh, to cope with uh, what was going on. Uh, that on one side. Secondly, um, the economic recovery program itself with the austerity program that has been, uh, you know, Im been implemented since 2022, uh, and the IMF recommendations, um, there was, uh, I mean, including the IMF kind of admits that it's going to be harsh on the people, right? Uh, they use terms like the bitter pill uh, to describe, you know, what kind of economic re recovery program it's going to be like. And it's not harsh on everybody, it's particularly harsh on people in the bottom strata of society, particularly the working poor. Um, and one of the things that uh, was recommended was to provide a, a broad social safety net uh, in order to help people um, somehow bear um, the, the pain that the economic recovery program was going to cause. Uh, the question, though, is have we really uh, made sure that a, a proper social protection system uh, has been put in place since the economic the crisis happened? Yeah. Sure. So if, if we were to play the devil's advocate, one can point out that, look, the austerity measures are in place as mm -hmm. they should be, um, unfortunately. But so are the so social protection mechanisms. We have the Aswasuma program, which mm -hmm. was rolled out. Um, hundreds of thousands of families are benefiting of it. There are the other welfare schemes that have been brought in. What is the lacuna that 
we're talking about? Yeah, so it's true uh, that a new uh, social protection scheme uh, designed by the World Bank, the Asvesma program, was uh, introduced. Um, so the Asvesma program um, is somewhat trying to replace Samurdi. Uh, Samurdi, again, was a targeted um, social protection scheme for the poor. Uh, but there are stark differences between Samurdi and sure. Asvesma. And one of the things that um, was put forward as a reason or the need for a new program was that the Samurdi program had issues, particularly in terms of how it targeted the poor. There were those who were not really eligible benefiting from it, and there were concerns about uh, the program being manipulated and so on. And the Asvesma program was put forward as, as a better targeted scheme. Sure. But what we saw happen, and I've been researching um, uh, social protection, particularly in, in the eastern province in Batiklo, uh, among poor women. And what we saw happen was many people were left behind, um, a region that has been affected by the war. Um, there were many women who were benefiting from Samurdi who were left behind. And then the question was, why were they left behind? Um, and what we came across was that in terms of the criteria that was used, at a time when almost one third of the households in Sri Lanka were facing food insecurity, um, the focus was given to assets, right? For example, if someone owned a house, then you know they were considered ineligible for the Asvesma program. Uh, and this is, is you know something really um, important to uh, think about because in an economic crisis people have really uh, been hit hard uh, and it, even for those who had incomes they lost incomes for those who had assets they're slowly losing those assets because of the rise in cost of living because of um, uh, the, the the hardships that the economic crisis has come right uh, brought about. Um, and what we found with the Asvesma program was that important considerations like are you able to put food on the table for your family were not really the main criteria that they went by. And here's the issue with so-called targeted schemes, right? Um, poverty is a complex experience for many people, mm. right? And it's not always possible to come up with a model and try and go and um, implemented uh, because of the complexities in, involved. The cookie cutter approach to trying to identify who the poor are uh, is not going to work, it's going to fail. Secondly, I think it, it's a very hate uh, generating process. What I mean by that is uh, that there's a lot of stigmatization that's involved. Um, if you think back on, on the campaign that you know was uh, accompanied the whole Asvesma selection process, uh, it was about please don't tell lies, uh, tell the truth, you know, and portraying poor people as if you know they're just there to deceive the government. Um, however, the idea of social protection is very different. It is actually a right, right, and social protection is there mainly because we all will end up facing unplanned um, events. So for example, for pregnant women, uh, when, when, when they have to go through childbirth, they may not be able to earn incomes for a while. Uh, if suddenly someone falls ill, if suddenly someone um, becomes disabled, old age. And so these are like natural um, forms of that in the life cycle that we go through. But if there's an economic crisis as the one we are facing and suddenly people have lost incomes, there has to be something that they can fall back on. And this is not just for the poor, it's for everybody. Um, and that's why people talk about universal schemes, right? And in Sri Lanka, we have a long history of universal schemes. We have free health and we have free education. Um, and that has been maintained for decades uh, with public funding. However, what's happened during the crisis is also that these social protection schemes that were already there are slowly being dismantled. Mm. Um, and so we saw people protest when the selection, um, the list of uh, selected people for that Swissman program came about. Uh, what's happening now is a bit of, you know, uh, of um, trying to fix the system, 
And so when people protested, some people who were on the former, some of the program were included in the program. The Asusma program was um, very um, narrowly targeted, so it's just a cash transfer program. Whereas with Samurdi, uh, Samurdi had its own issues, but Samurdi had a broader um, uh, set of uh, programs. So there was the cash transfer program, but there was also loans and savings. So the Samurdi Bank is built on people's savings and membership money that they pay. Um, as well as social um, uh, upliftment programs in the, in the village levels. And one of the main things that a lot of women that I talked to in, 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 in the Eastern province told me was that it's not just even the cash transfer that you know, uh, they find important. The cash transfers are just minuscule, right? It doesn't meet the needs of uh, um, the families. Uh, however, it's the, their ability to access other services like education, like getting uh, an electricity connection at a subsidized rate, um, like getting relief when there is a, a disaster, right? Mm. And their ability to negotiate with the state, that they're able to go to the government and negotiate with the government to give them what they think is their right. And what is happening right now is that we are slowly dismantling all, the, all those social protection schemes that we had um, scapegoating the economic crisis. Societally, we tend to be averse to change. Mm -hmm. um, in, in terms of the um, Aswasuma social protection scheme, which is currently in place, um, how do you propose we could build on it to make it better? Um, in my opinion, I think the program itself has to be shelved. Um, what's your what's the alternative um, that you propose? Uh, because I'll, I'll explain why. Because um, a narrowly targeted cash transfer program does not do much. Uh, I think, and um, you know, that we we really need to move to a universal social protection. Could program. you elaborate on? Uh, what I mean by that is just like we have free health and free education that is accessible to all Sri Lankans. Um, if you walk into a hospital, you are able to get treated sure. uh, and if you know if you if you want to admit your child into a public school you're able to admit your child regardless of your income um, uh, and you don't have to prove you, you know that you're, you deserve those services right. I think there is a need for a universal social protection scheme particularly focused on food security right. because what we are seeing happening now is is a serious um, uh, challenge with uh, food security, right? We've seen the, the you know, how children under five, um, the malnutrition levels have really gone up. Um, we've seen that many families are food insecure. Uh, and so the, so now is a really good opportunity to think of a universal uh, food distribution system that the government provides. And again, going back to history, we've had these kinds of programs in the 70s. Right? We've had like uh, families uh, getting a, a few kilograms of rice uh, every month. Uh, why I say this is that um, when I talk to women um, in my research, we find that many ha are only eating one meal per day. Mm. Uh, and you can't think of economic recovery. You can't think of human development indicators improving. You can't think of a, a healthy society. You can't think of a society um, uh, in terms of social development if we can't meet the minimum level of food requirement, mm -hmm. right? Um, and, and so I think now is, now is a good opportunity to move there. Secondly, the number of poor people have doubled, right? Statistics show that uh, those who are poor, uh, you know, if you compare it to 2021, we have uh, the percentage has doubled. Um, and so it does not make sense in a context like this to go looking for the poor. The poor have increased. Um, and therefore, there's no point in kind of putting them through this whole process of applying and having to prove that they're poor. Uh, it, it just doesn't make sense. Third, I think the, uh, why the Asvesma program will not work is that it's been designed as a program uh, that will have to be phased out. Uh, in a few years. 
Whereas the idea of social protection, as I mentioned before, is that it allows for people to face contingencies throughout their life cycle. Um, so um, I don't think the program actually uh, addresses that. Um, therefore, I think we really need to have a broader discussion about social protection, not just about programs like Samudhi or targeted programs for the poor, but overall, what, what is going to be our social policy that's actually genuinely going to help people come out of this crisis? Uh, dismantling free education right now with privatizing parts of education, again, is, is not going to help. We've also seen the, the kind of challenges in the health system. Um, um, Niantani, don't you think that the focus should also be on encouraging people to um, have better livelihoods rather than just giving them handouts and welfare benefits uh, as a long-term thing? Absolutely. I, I totally agree, right? Social protection is not going to help us uh, come out of this crisis, uh, although it's important to help people survive the crisis. Um, if you're thinking long term, we have to think of investing in people's livelihoods. If we look at successive governments in the last 40, 50 years, uh, and if you look at the government's budget, uh, and where the distribution of funding goes, uh, we see that you know, sectors like agriculture and fisheries, which is where most Sri Lankans depend on for their livelihoods, has been hugely underfunded. Right? Mm -hmm. If you look at education and health, in Sri Lanka, we spend the least amount for education in South Asia. Um, therefore, I think the need to uh, think of redistribution um, and starting with the government's budget is, is going to be very important for All Sri right. Lanka's recovery. We are in conversation uh, with researcher Niyanthini Khadirkama. We're going for a short commercial break. We'll platform. TV One. TV for life. Supreme Court says certain sections of the anti-terrorism bill would require a special majority vote and referendum. Court delays decision on petition challenging speaker certificate on Online Safety Act. Telecom, postal, banking and other labor unions protest against sale of national assets. President at United Nations FAO Asia and Pacific Regional Conference. Local farmers question missing representation at United Nations FAO Conference. Rajarata farmers rush to Colombo. Talks between political groups and election commission delayed. New archaeological project promises to rewrite history in Poland Narwa. TV One, TV for life. Platform. Welcome back. My guest tonight is researcher and feminist activist Niantini Khadirkama. Uh, we're discussing how uh, important it is to factor in social development. Niantini, uh, when we take a look at the macroeconomic policies in Sri Lanka, they are largely gender neutral. However, the crises have very gendered consequences. You've uh, researched specifically the North and East. Talk to us about how important it is to uh, recognize how these gendered um, consequences work. I think if, if we look, again look back at 
you know, the last 50 years and the history of economic policy making in Sri Lanka, many of the macroeconomic uh, policies have had gendered consequences. For example, if we go back to the period when uh, the open economy was introduced, um, we allowed, uh, we opened the economy, we moved towards an export oriented model, and we created export processing zones, right, the free trade zones. Um, at the same time, we allowed foreign capital to come into the rural sector, um, and many women farmers lost you know, ownership to land, and they became either agricultural farmers, um, or they had to migrate to look for work elsewhere. Similarly, the rural industries um, could not withstand the competition, and then the, the kind of state protection that was given to cottage industries and you know rural industries where a lot of women worked were also dismantled. And so since the 80s we see you know women migrating both to like urban centers in free trade zones where they started working in garment factories, um, or they went abroad and they and they started sending you know remittances back home. And so Sri Lanka now has a, a, an economy that's dependent on largely women's labor to earn a foreign exchange, which is one of the main reasons for the economic crisis that we face, right? The lack of foreign exchange. And so in the tea plantations, which has been there for decades since um, uh, the British were here, uh, women are you know, uh, mainly uh, work as tea pluckers. And then in the garment factories and you know, as domestic labor abroad. Um, so that's one gendered consequence, you know, that we see. Um, with those changes, um, it impacts women's lives in several ways. One is in terms of their family structure, and women leaving home, leaving their children, going elsewhere to work, um, kind of reconfigures uh, the family, including the power dynamics between um, uh, in, the, in the family. Two, in terms of um, women's uh, rights uh, at, at the workplace, in terms of wages, uh, wages kept, you know, being pushed down. Um, so women were hi are being hired for cheaper labor in very exploitative conditions, with very little protection because labor laws are, you know, uh, flaunted. Right in, in the in the free trade zone, we see that a lot. Um, and uh, so that's another gendered consequences. And women's bodies are also controlled in various ways, uh, including in, you know, they're being surveilled. Um, there was a lot of a stigma attached uh, to some of the work that they do. Um, and even their, you know, ability to um, uh, visit the washroom in, in a factory is being controlled. Um, their access to health uh, during work hours um, and even their relationships are being monitored. So there are various ways in which women's lives, including their labor, has, has changed. What I think happened with the economic crisis, again, you know, it, it's all about macroeconomic, you know, indicators and so on. It's, it's, it's put forward to us as gender neutral. But if you look at, although all Sri Lankans were impacted by the economic crisis, who has been impacted much more? Right? It is the working people and it's, it's women um, because it's not just that women had to face the failure of the market. It's not that they had to face job losses and income losses. But what happens in an economic crisis when the market fails is that all of that risk is pushed into the household. Mm. So women have to somehow find ways to put food on the table uh, amidst rising costs, amidst food shortages, amidst fuel costs, amidst rising elect electricity um, mm. um, bills. Right? And this is one way in which the crisis is managed, I would say. Mm. Um, and so women have to then bear the double burden of having to earn an income in, in a fa failing economy and also bear the burden at home um, of doing the care work, which is absolutely necessary for, for, for society to function. Policies must be uh, inclusive and equitable, and policy makers need to be uh, cognizant and mindful of this. Um, over 90% of our policymakers in parliament are men do you think 
um, the lack of knowledge ability is to blame or is it the patriarchy I don't know um, what, what is it what, how do you think we can sort of rectify it maybe people d just don't know people just don't realize that women are um, disproportionately affected by policies when these kinds of issues are not taken into consideration when creating the policies True, I think there is a, a, a lot of ignorance mm -hmm. um, and it is also due to the fact that women are not consulted in places where policies are being created. Sure. Um, and I think there is a, a need to shift our analysis in how we approach the economy and how we think about economic policy. Uh, and that's one of the reasons, um, you know, the group I'm part, part of the Feminist Collective for Economic Justice, we came together mainly to provide an analysis uh, from women's perspective and working people's perspective, but also to kind of demystify um, the way in which people talk about the economy um, and bring it much more closer to, to people. Um, because an economy can't run uh, without society functioning, right? It's, it's people who contribute with their labor and sweat. Um, so I think that's, that's an important shift. Um, and two, I think it's, it's also to do with not just who makes those policies, it's also the ideological push that informs those policies. So uh, the, the question I, I, I keep asking is in this current crisis, are we actually thinking about recovery that is meaningful to all Sri Lankans, inclu including women, including the working poor? Factoring in social development, I mean, it, it, it seems idealistic almost, mm -hmm. like something you find in a textbook. Mm -hmm. um, how do we make sure that people know that it's also about um, creating empathy, about value systems, about dignity. If people don't know that they are entitled to these, uh, to the bare minimum, as it were, they wouldn't, they wouldn't ask for it, they wouldn't demand it. So how do we create this bridge between the, the theory and practice? Mm. I think that we need to have more conversations um, and speak to people, right? Because they, they do have ideas. If, you know, when in my research, I've learned as much as I'm trying to research and, you know, bring out some, um, some understanding, I've learned so much from the women themselves because they have ideas about how they think, you know, some of this should be run or how, you know, social protection should be run. Uh, and so we really need to have that dialogue with the people um, and I think that's, that's a very important um, uh, approach. Um, and uh, in terms of values, I think it's also in, in interconnected with the systems that we build. If we treat the poor as people who are just there, you know, to um, just ask for handouts, and we create systems that perpetuate that kind of thinking, right? Mm -hmm then we are not going to see the change in, in society. We're trying to keep them there, right? But as I said, social protection is, is a right. Uh, and it's, it's absolutely you know, essential for democracy um, because even for governments to be able to negotiate with, with the people, right? And offer them uh, something meaningful. And it, it is important that we have those systems. In a situation where we don't have a government that does not have the ability to do so will more and more rely on res repressive means to control uh, the society and which is what unfortunately we're seeing right now in Sri Lanka with many repressive laws. Thank you very much for sharing your perspectives Niantini Khadrikama. It was a pleasure. Thank you so much. Thank you for watching us. We'll see you again tomorrow. Good night.